Welcome to Beyond the Horizon podcast, a show all about the Horizon ecosystem and the exciting world of blockchain and Web3. Join us as we explore the latest happenings in this rapidly evolving space and discover new horizons together. Now let's go Beyond the Horizon. Hi, everybody. I'm super glad to be here today uh, again. We are uh, going with the various uh, rounds of interviews with our various protocols and partners being integrated with E.ON. We couldn't be more excited today to be having these interviews and conversations with all the various different protocols integrated into E.ON. So I'm super excited to be here today. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Angie, and today I'm here with Kasra. Kasra is joining us from Flare Protocol. So I would like to uh, uh, welcome you, Kasra. And please, if you would like to introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Angie. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, um, My name is Kasra. I'm the co-founder of Flare. Super excited to be here and diving deep into E.ON and also what Flare does. Awesome. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's. Uh, I think it was, it's like such an exciting day because we've been ongoing with this like conversations and interviews with partners. I think when we... And I don't know how repetitive this is going to sound, depending on how many other interviews uh, folks have been uh, doing with the various team members of Horizon and E.ON and our, our uh, partners here. Uh, but I think this is really exciting as we are really focused and growing up the ecosystem, like really building this very trustworthy environment for users. Uh, and we've said that whether this is for like builders or uh, people that are like very focused, let's say on DeFi or certain areas, actually Kasra and myself, we were talking a little bit about that um, uh, b just before we got started with this, uh, how, what what is it that we could like try to focus or major focuses? And I think there's really not like one answer or like one size fits all. I think what once you have a chain, once you have, um, let's say a network, and then you have great partners being integrated with, I think the possibilities are endless. So I don't know. I'm always excited about this type, this types of integrations. And Kasra, I would like for you to just, you know, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and and um, uh, what is it that you do at at Flare? I, I mean, you, you said you're one of the co-founders, so that's great. Absolutely, and I think I want to kind of highlight what you mentioned about the current state of the market. It is a bear market, but I have not seen more excitement in the builders and the like, projects who just think of it as a long term. So yeah, I think it's just amazing that Polar keep building. And uh, for us, uh, when we wanted to build something in blockchain, it was always interesting to try to tackle, let's say, the most pressing problems. Uh, both me and my co-founder, we known each other for a very long time and we had background in creating developer tools in let's say Fortune 500 companies, Square, The Zone, uh, we had kind of mostly Web2 experience. Uh, but the kind of the idea behind blockchain always seemed interesting for us. And we started kind of experimenting with it here and there, created our wallet, you know, try to uh, think like what is all about. And to be honest, until today, the most exciting aspect of blockchain for me is kind of, let's say the composable way of building. You know, we have like an Ethereum and we have all the L2s right now, rollups. And this is kind of a really interesting way of building, you know, new software, new products, because it's like all of us are sharing a infrastructure to build on top of each other's knowledge and experience and the tools we have built. So Flare basically came out of a lot of experiments that we have run. As I mentioned, we worked on um, NFTs, we dabbed into smart contracts and everything. But in our journey, we always uh, kind of faced issues when it came to basically reading the data from blockchain. Because as folks might not know, blockchain is kind of a global database, but querying from that database is not the easiest thing because the blockchain has to store the data in an efficient way. And you cannot, for example, ask blockchain and simple questions like you would do, for example, with traditional databases. So basically there is a need for, you can call it the indexing solution or a data pipeline solution on top of blockchain, which is different type of projects, different developers, they need to ask blockchain different questions. For example, what is the TLV of my DeFi protocol? Or how many of these NFT transfers are happening related to my contracts? So basically that's what we're doing. We're trying to create a data pipeline tool on top of blockchain that just makes it easier for developers to 
read data and use it in their application, use it for analytics or let's say other different purposes. So that's basically how we started with kind of the idea of uh, Flare as an indexing solution. That's amazing. And I, I really like the way you put it. Like, I think when you say this, like, okay, developers, builders, or people that are interacted, uh, interacting with the blockchain, let's say maybe in a deeper level, it, maybe it's not necessarily like the, the highest or super critical technical, like let's say uh, endpoint, but it is in a way interacting in the blockchain. And I think something that you mentioned is like answering these questions. It's very important. Let's say, Let's take an example at analytics. It's it's just like needed. It's it's necessary. Like I don't think there's there's really an option to not be aware of what's going on, uh, transactions, information, volume, activity happening. And I think as you were saying, okay, data indexing. Would you would you like to kind of like hone in on let's say uh, some of the most common use cases that you are like helping developers or your community let's say to just kind of like go deeper into that subject because i think it's really interesting what you guys are doing yeah i think it's um let's say kind of the blockchain always uh, comes up with new use cases i mean we have seen let's say the birth of nfts and after that you know like ens like there's all different you know different use cases that are coming up maybe on a high level it's interesting for people to know that uh for blockchain data, there are basically two aspects of it. One of them is the historical data aspect, which is like the blockchain data has a really large amount of historical data. Like imagine Ethereum has been running for four years and as every second goes by, all these transactions are happening. So you still need to get this historical data from blockchain to ask some critical questions, but also it is important to get this data in real time because as I mentioned, every second these transactions are happening. And sometimes for some applications, you need to get this data in seconds really, really fast to, for example, if um, a really important transaction of a user dependence on this information, then that's super critical. And as folks might know or not know, dealing with historical and real-time data aspects are basically two different beasts. They're completely, you know, um, different problem sets. So we kind of realized that both of them are needed and that's what kind of we're trying to tackle both of them, both historical and real-time data. I can give you, for example, a few examples, like imagine a game that uh, might deploy on Eon or they might have, you know, data on some other chains. It's really important for that game to get a, you know, um, a snapshot of, for example, all the players that are, you know, playing their game, for example, all the NFT holders. And the interesting thing about L2s is that, you know, not all the data for a game can be on one chain. It can be on multiple chains. So you need to wait to get this data from multiple chains even. And um, that's basically one aspect, you know, you want to get all the data from your users from the past, but also imagine a player is playing some game and they have got a new NFT or a new transaction, it's really important uh, to get that data really fast in real time. But for DeFi protocols, as I mentioned, like TLV, uh, all this critical information for the protocol, it's really important to get them, but also as transactions are coming, um, it's, uh, it's necessary to show them to the user so they can, you know, make more informed decisions. So yeah, these are kind of one of the two examples that we're working with. We were working with DeFi and gaming projects. So these are some of the common use cases, let's say. That's that's really interesting. Is there is there one, let's say, that's, let's say, right now most used than another one? Or they're pretty much the same in terms of like how, how let's say, um, users interact? Like, I don't know if DeFi is still like a, like very significant or is it gaming like trying to take off? How, how do you see that's like moving? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. I think DeFi has shown itself as, uh, let's say, the more the most practical use case of blockchain because it literally touches a lot of people's life. You know, like you don't need to wait for banks to uh, kind of verify certain things. So uh, as I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's the case for Eon as well. Like it's mostly kind of the use case of, you know, the, De the DeFi aspects. But it doesn't mean that all the other use cases should, you know, uh, not experiment because you know games uh, of course is challenging because games already have a lot of different aspects when it comes to you know building the game itself all of that and you want to add blockchain to it just makes it much more complicated and the tooling is not perfect as i mentioned 
for example, wallet experience is still not good. The real-time data aspect is still not good. For example, if a player is doing something and it takes 10 minutes for them to get the data, then uh, like no player in the world would uh, have the patience to wait 10 minutes to get uh, basically uh, the data. So these are kind of the challenges, especially for more real-time applications like, let's say, games. But it's getting there. We are, you know, building uh, things as we go. And hopefully one day we can onboard 1 billion users to blockchain. Yeah, yeah. Now that's that's really interesting. And and this let's let's take this like gaming example. I think it's we are and we've been, you know, I I don't know how many years or, or even months has it been for you, uh, but it's for me it's been seven years in this industry, and we've literally come a long way in the sense that we are answering and discovering and building at the same time. I think all those things are happening at the same time. I don't think it's like we're like at a point in which like okay we figure it out and that's it. And what I'm trying to say is that we are, there's a lot of people in, in, let's say, curious minds that are trying to solve these issues, provide opportunities, provide services and say, hey, my platform, my tools can really help, let's say, uh, having the uh, data available, uh, data that you can trust, uh, networks that you can trust. And we're do they're doing and we're doing now, in this case, both of us as we speak. So, for example, for a gamer, for an for an end user, they would have these tools available. They can trust these tools, and they need to be efficient as well. We know that blockchains face a lot of challenges these days. It's always about communicating with each other, meaning interoperability. It's always about enhancing security because they could be secure. But I don't think I don't think uh, all the blockchains or all of them are going to be hundred percent secure. Like there's always going to be some sort of type of vulnerability. So just thinking about security interoperability and also like providing a user experience that's rich enough for for the end users it with those three i think we could like do a lot of things let's say that there's like areas of opportunity so i i do uh um agree with what you just said uh Kasra, and i find it also very interesting people that like kind of like challenges and solving things and making them more efficient if you're not in crypto or what three please join like because we need you like we, we need this type of people right to to join the 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 industry the ecosystem the communities i don't know how how it's been that for you but i i do agree that it's like it's always for people trying to improve and and see how we can solve issues or opportunities yeah i couldn't agree more and uh, like uh, history is getting built here you know for uh, i mean of course there's always bad ideas that would go away and the stronger ideas would remain that's true for any industry so i don't want to you know, mark something against um, crypto just because some of the previous ideas didn't work out. That's what happens when you want to build stuff. You know, you need to make some mistakes. Of course, it's much better if, you know, people's life don't get impacted too much or anything. But again, that's that's technology. That's, that's how we do things. Um, and like one common thing I also hear about as a kind of, um, let's say, uh, criticism of blockchain is uh, that idea doesn't work. And they don't understand that, you know, like literally every everything is an evolution. You know, you uh, you work, build some stuff that don't work. I'm pretty sure for internet, a lot of things were super slow, not scalable and all of that. So basically that's, that's the same story that's happened here as well. Yeah, yeah, we're literally on our way. And now there are a lot of cool things that are already working and a, a lot of great ecosystems and communities and projects. Uh, there might be some industries or some use cases in which maybe blockchain is not, it's not a solution. That's okay. That's fine. But I, I remember the days when maybe social media wasn't as good as and efficient as it is now, right? And like, I don't know, MySpace and all this like tools that we used to have, they, they were not the same. Like they're, they started like opening up this, this like ecosystems and ideas and communities. And now like, I believe that there's like really literally nothing that you, that you can do with social media in the sense that it's, it's a great tool. It's a, it's a great way to do pretty much everything like business, communities, communication, friends, family, it's everything. Right. And I think yeah, blockchain, Web3, crypto, it's like literally the same. It's opening up a lot of these doors and, and breaking, let's say, its frontier. So I, I agree with that. Um, one thing that comes to mind, uh, Kasra, is what is it, for example, that you are excited, uh, let's say, for the next quarter or the end of the year? Uh, could you share with us? Would you like to share with us, I don't know, some of the things that you're really excited and, and passionate about with Flair? Yeah, of course. I think uh, basically the story for us is to... Is, is two aspects, let's say, for for Flare or also for the future. 
double down on the things that are working and just make them better and be open, let's say, for new ideas. Because like, again, history is not written yet. We need to, we need to write it. So when it comes to basically Flair and what we have been doing, uh, our platform right now is getting tested by you know, some, let's say, big projects. For example, we are working with Sushi Swap team. We're working with some of the big names in the space. And their needs also is evolving every day. For example, you know, the number of their you know, uh, pools, their project basically is getting larger. And that brings new and interesting challenges for us to you know, make our product much better. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the same case for Eon and Horizon as basic different use cases that come. You, you look at them and you try to make your product you know, much better. And uh, that's the same scenario for us as well. So we are heads down. We are building our platform to just be more scalable, better, easier to work with. Like literally every day we're trying to add like new features. I can give you an example. For example, uh, as part of our indexer, one of the features that you want is to say, for example, I want the data on this contract, on this black uh, block address for that transaction. And it, this used to be like a more manual process. You need to, uh, you know, literally define it. But for example, one of the things we're working on is to make it much more automatic. So for example, you just say, I want this data and the indexer goes and finds all the relevant blocks and transactions and gets them from the database and put it in the kind of, you know, the destination that you want. So Basically, all these little improvements that we do is going to make the developer's life a bit easier and he or she would have, you know, more free time to focus on some other things, you know, another new feature, not to rebuild this thing from scratch. And the other aspect, uh, as I mentioned, is just being open for new ideas. Like we are working with some games right now in discussion with them. They are, you know, deploying their own chains. They're working on some cool feature, just being part of those conversations is, is super fascinating. And it kind of challenges your mindset, your ideas. You might even come up with new ideas because, you know, the incentive model and everything are changing. So basically, these are the two aspects that I'm super looking forward in the in the next few months. I'm, I'm excited. And, and I think we we do at, like at Horizon and even with Beyond, we do resonate resonate a lot with that because for us, it's like, OK, What's the next step? What's how is it that we're going to be improving and enhancing the network, making it Thank more you for secure, joining us on Beyond the Horizon the ecosystem? Like Stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue to discover the limitless potential of the Horizon to ecosystem. Users. If you liked this episode, um, you know, make sure to subscribe about, like, and leave making, a thumbs up. Um, Thank uh, you, and we'll see you again next time. And builders 